Welcome back, everybody, to another episode of Project Ozone 3 in Kappa Mode. Oh, yeah, guys, so last episode, we did end up making ourselves the Nether Cake and the Overworld Cake. I accidentally placed down the Overworld Cake and the Overworld, which isn't going to help us out too much. Uh, and then I did place down this Obsidian Block on top of our Nether Cake, and I tried right-clicking on this, or I guess left-clicking on it, to break it. And we saw that it was going to take literally forever. I guess probably just a standard amount of time to break it. Yeah, so we don't have a way to remove that block at this time, but I would like to make a way for us to do that. So, here's what we're going to do. We're going to grab some lava out of our lava generator, and we're going to get ourselves two pieces of obsidian. Now, if we come over here to our part builder, we place those in here, we can get ourselves an obsidian sharpening kit, and if we grab ourselves a piece of flint... That's not flint. That's flint. If we grab ourselves a piece of flint, we can add that to our stone pickaxe. So currently it says we have a mining level of iron, but if you take an obsidian sharpening kit or any other sharpening kit, I suppose, and craft it in the tool station with a piece of flint, you can upgrade the mining level to whatever the sharpening kit's mining level is. And in this case, obsidian gives us cobalt mining level, which we're probably gonna want anyway if we're gonna be going to the nether. So there we go. Uh, I made the advancement, isn't it? Iron pick. Anyway, uh, so this does not increase the speed in which we can mine, but it does allow us the ability to mine obsidian. So we mine it a lot faster than the same speed if we were to punch it with our hand. Yeah. Anyway, so we are able to mine this block and it won't take forever. It's only going to take half of forever now, which is better than taking forever. Right? I think so. Anyway. Uh, so we'll get this piece of obsidian back, and boop, there we go. Awesome. So now we don't have that silly thing hanging out <laughs> above our nether cake over there. Um, so yeah, last episode we also ended up making our leather armor. We made the workbench here, and we saw that this slot right here is actually our own player uh, armor slots. It's just the inventory, but it's not really inventory. It's the armor slots. So yeah, you can... Put the armor on from right here and then you can upgrade it and things along those lines so back in our quest book if we go to whichever page it is that has all the armor on it i guess it's this one that has the armor stuff uh we can see that we did complete the quest for the workbench so let's claim that and there's also a quest for having all the leather stuff in our inventory which i don't think we have done yet so if i put in my inventory then we should get the quest complete or is there something else that we're missing here it says i'm missing leather pants and i'm missing leather boots why? Leather pants, leather boots. Maybe I have to put them on the ground and pick them up? Oh, okay, I throw them down and <laughs> it says that I have them? Okay, I'm not sure. Maybe the quest book is just taking its sweet time to upgrade or update. Uh, copper armor is the next stage of our armor progression and that is going to require us to have, I guess, 24 copper ingots, I would imagine. I don't know if we have that much copper, do we? We do. So it might be worth us to go ahead and upgrade our armor and get through uh, the initial stages here. Give us a little bit more protection for going into the nether. Again, I don't remember uh, if the nether has like a lot of crazy things that we need to be worried about or if it's just a very tame nether. Yeah, I honestly can't remember, but I definitely don't want to go in there underprepared. Uh, so right now we only have three and a half shirts. I don't remember how much better the copper armor is compared to the leather armor. I guess we can look at it. So this says one, three, so that'd be a four, seven, eight. So I guess that'd give us a half a shirt more, right? Yeah. Uh, so it's slightly better. Uh, the next one after copper, if we take a look, is coal armor. Uh, I assume we should be able to just craft it with what we have, then tin, then void crystal. I think that's getting to the point where we can't do anything yet because we don't have the atomic reconstructor, the actually additions laser thing in order to make void crystals. So we'll have to hold off on that. Uh, oh, we ran out of, we ran out of fuel. Let's grab, I think just seven of those and we can split those apart. I guess eight of those would have made the correct amount. I was thinking I'd get nine per, but you only get eight per, I'm pretty sure. Uh, so anyway, we have to wait for two more of those to smelt down and done. Cool. So we will upgrade our armor. 
Let's take all this off and we will just do it this way because it's faster. So there's a copper helmet. We need a copper chest plate. We also need copper leggings and finally copper boots. Cool. So I'll wait for the quest book to update that. We'll claim it. And the next one, coal armor. Let's take a look at this. So coal armor is made from armor plus and the recipe is blocks of coal. So we need 24 blocks of coal. We have 21. I guess 22 if we uh, take this. So it might be worth our while to do a little bit more sifting to get the coal. What is that from? Let's take a look here. So if we do gravel on iron, we get it at a 16% chance. Yeah, so I just need to go sift some more gravel. Uh, get enough for like three more blocks of coal and then we should be able to make that armor. So let me do that real quick and we will be right back. And the sifting has concluded. So we got a decent amount of resources here. I've actually had to take our iron and blockify it. I took our uh, rock candy and turned it into the hardened rock candy. And I've smelted down a little bit more iron, which we probably have over here ready to go. Yeah. Uh, our one chest, our double chest, our large chest here is definitely filling up quickly. Anyway, uh, we have enough of the coal blocks that we need in order to do what we're trying to do here. So let's go back to the copper armor and we will, oh, guess I need, or oh, not copper, we're doing coal armor. Yeah, we need the copper armor to make the coal armor. Okay, so there we go. There's a coal helmet, coal chest plate, coal leggings, and coal boots. Awesome. So if we put all those on, uh, oh, does that give us night vision? Well, that's kind of cool. I didn't realize that you can get buffs from doing that. So yeah, that gives us four and a half shirts of armor. So that's pretty cool. I like it. And if we come here, we can claim the RAK and 10 armor is the next one. In fact, so maybe, uh, do we have 10 to do that? I'm sure we have 10 in here somewhere. I think, yeah, we have 10. So if we smelt down 24 of those, we should be good to go for the next tier of armor. And I don't know if we can use partially damaged armor to upgrade. Yeah, I honestly don't know how that all works, but you know, I'm pretty happy with the night vision and four and a half shirts should get us by for what we're trying to do here. Uh, I need to repair this guy. Yeah, I've done just a little bit of stuff off camera here. I got rid of the slabs over by our mob farm. We had the slabs around the mob farm so I could be up higher when I was attacking the monster so they couldn't see me. But now that we've automated it, that doesn't matter anymore. So I got rid of the slabs around here. I placed some torches and I moved the, uh, the cobblestone walls down so they are not up one block like they were before. Yeah, it looks a little bit nicer, I think. Uh, so yeah, that took some durability off my pick and now we have resolved that. And I've also made some obsidian here just by AFKing and waiting for this to fill up and putting into our uh, stone barrel down there. Uh, so the reason why I did that is because I want to make nether portal. Now we have the nether cake, which we're going to use. Uh, but if we wanted to set up a portal in the uh, nether to come back, I think we need a portal in the overworld for it to connect to. I'm not entirely sure how that all that works. Um, so we could use the nether cakes and then set up the portal, or we could just set up the portal right away. Uh, I'm not really sure if it matters, to be honest. Like, I, I'm fairly certain it doesn't, but I would like to set up this portal anyway. So we're gonna go ahead and place down a three by three nether portal. Now I know it doesn't have to be three by three, but I don't really care much for, oh, is that? No, that was right height. I don't really care much for uh, the two by four or whatever size portal that uh, is the default one. I'd rather have three by three so we can line that up um, with an odd number tunnel or whatever. So this is not gonna permanently be here, but that's what we got for right now. Now to light the portal, we need to get ourselves like a, um, I don't know, a fire charge or something along these lines that requires steel. A flint and steel requires steel in this particular mod pack. So we can't really do either of those. So we can do the vanilla method and use lava. Yep. If we place down planks on the back here, 
something like that, and then we place a source of lava and let that flow down, we can, uh, yeah, we can use that to, uh, let this catch fire, and as soon as one of these planks catches on fire, then I'll light the portal. So really, the only thing I gotta do right now is just place lava right here, and then just kind of wait. That'll spread out, and we'll have plenty of source blocks, or I guess plenty of lava, to um, try and light the wood on fire over here. Now, it can take a little bit of time. It can happen instantly, but really, we have no way of seeing in there to tell if it's worked or not. Uh, pretty, yeah, there you go. Yep, so what happened is the lava caught one of those planks on fire, and as soon as it did, it lit the portal. So that's all we have to do. Now we can just let that lava go away, and we have a way into the nether. Now we can do the same exact thing inside the nether once we get there to get another portal linked up. As soon as this lava wants to go away, I will collect my blocks back. Okay. So grab that. Grab this. And it's gone. Okay, that's fine. Anyway, so we have that. So everything's fine. I can go ahead and get rid of this wood in the back here so we can reuse that. And it looks like a piece of that went through the portal, which is going to cause the uh, nether to finally generate for us. Uh, but yeah, when we go through, we can go ahead and use that as well. Uh, it probably would be a good idea for me to notate down our coordinates here. Now, I am kind of noticing this, and I didn't really notice before. When I started up this world, we aren't at zero, zero. Yeah, we are We are at like X 842 by negative 153. It is kind of interesting. But anyway, if we go to the nether and we link up a portal one eighth of that dimension. So if we go like X 100 Z, whatever it is, I don't know. Uh, then yeah, we can link these portals together. Um, but I think I'm just gonna use another cake first since we made it and then we'll uh, link up our portal so let's just go looks like we had a bunch of pigs to spawn over there just noticing on the mini map so let's just go ahead and right click on this and see what happens so this teleports us into the nether at x zero z zero okay so if i would have linked up our nether portal we'd be in much better position now i don't have any blocks and i definitely don't want lava to uh spill all over me so i definitely want to have blocks ready to go so we have nether prosperity ore so that'll get us into mystical agriculture um but yeah which way is positive x i guess we should figure that out okay so that's a negative so i need to go to 100 this way and then i think we need to go a little bit that way so i'm just going to go ahead and start digging up this particular direction and hopefully we can break out into the nether, and then we'll set up our nether portal where it needs to be. Okay, change of plan. I went ahead and I used that overworld apple that we had to warp back to the overworld. Yeah, I forgot to bring any type of sharpening kit so we can keep using our pickaxe. That's my mistake here. So we can just throw those in here, make a bunch of these stone sharpening kits. Now on the fly, whenever we are, we can use those to repair our pickaxe. Well, since we came back here, and we do have some stuff. I can drop off some of these things since we don't particularly need those on us. Yeah, because we upgrade our pickaxe to the cobalt level, I was able to mine Ardite. And then we got some gold and then some other stuff here. Not really sure what we're gonna do with all that. We did get prosperity. And when I got the prosperity, it did a quest complete for having Inferium, which we've collected from our mob farm as well. So we have a few quests complete here. Uh, let's collect this one and we will collect that one cool so a few more quests complete we're up to a decent amount of rak right now almost three stacks of this stuff um so yeah that was kind of a problem that that happened but uh now that we are here in the overworld we could probably just go through our regular portal we did use the nether cake once uh but before i do that i want to make sure that i have an overworld apple on me just in case and i think yeah they're right here okay so yeah the overworld apple, you eat that, you don't need to have hunger or whatever, and it warps you back to the overworld. Uh, but of course, if we just go through this portal, we should be able to just do the normal linking our portal like we do. And is this at the right dimension? Actually, let's just try and go through this and see if it links up. Hopefully it doesn't put me out in the middle of the void somewhere. 
yeah that links up just fine uh all right so yeah we can go back to the nether i guess i didn't need to mine that extra obsidian what are you that is a brute and i don't know that's a white okay so there are pretty hostile things here that we gotta be aware of oh okay so this brute is very mean Uh, it, wow, that just completely destroyed my armor. Oh my goodness. I did not realize this armor had like no durability at all. Holy crap. Oh, okay. Well, we don't have the full set, so we don't have night vision anymore. Um, yeah, that is uh, kind of a problem. Well, now that we have the sharpening kits on us, we should be able to just kind of get away from the portal real quick. I would like to vein mine a bunch of this nether rack. We need to smelt this into nether brick, or we could just go find a fortress. But since our armor is kind of garbage tier, yeah, pretty sure we don't want to do that. What is this stuff? Nether rhyme crystal. No idea what that is. Well, anyway, let's go ahead and sharpen up this thing and let's grab some more nether rack. I really don't know how much we need, but let's just grab some while we're here. Oop. Okay. Uh, just go ahead and break that with my shovel. It's fine. Get out of the hole here. And that's pretty much all we need to do in the nether for right now. I am pretty sure. Yeah, I don't think we really need to do too much here. And I'm not sure I really want to do too much here with, uh, with these guys hanging around. Please don't see me. Please don't see me. Okay, so I just loaded the game back up and it screamed again at me like it did when I died, apparently, to the brute. Oh boy. So it shows, it looks like I'm in the overworld and says that I'm dead, but I'm not. Ah, uh, so the game crashed right there is what happened before. So I have nothing. Now, if I, I'm, I'm backwards. Why am I backwards? What the heck? I'm backwards here too. What is going on? Okay, that might be because I'm dead. I don't actually know. Uh, I can only assume though, if I go to the nether, that brute is gonna be there. I am hoping that's not the case, but my stuff I do believe is in the over or in the nether. I think the ghostly sheep prevents you from taking damage, I think. Uh, all right, so my grave is right here. I don't see the brute around, so we should be okay. So let's grab this, and I'm just gonna get out of here. <laughs> yeah, I don't want to deal with anything else here. So I got my armor back, what's left of it. Oh boy. Uh, we got an ability totem, though. Oh, that's right, because I died, uh, it dropped the ability totem, I guess. So now I gotta reapply that. I think that cost a little bit. I can't remember now. Uh, let's come back over here. Let's grab our ability bottle because I like having that magnet. And we already have 19 levels, so we should be able to reapply it, I'm pretty sure. Uh, where did I put the ability bottle? Must be right here. Okay. So that. How do I do this? Do I craft it together? Mm, do I right click it? Shift right click. I mean, it says I have magnetized there. Yeah, I don't remember how this works. Oh, if I right click on this, the ability totem. Oh, do I even need the ability bottle? Maybe I don't. Okay, so I right click on this and then I can add this over. Okay, so we'll do that. And the ability bottle, I think, is just so we can take that off and store it somewhere. Okay, yeah, it's been a minute since I've messed with these things, so I'm still remembering how this all works. Okay, so we now have magnetized back. Our armor is completely beat up, but we have the nether rack, and that was really what we were looking for. Um, so now that we have the nether rack, we can start progressing a little bit more in our quest book. So the next thing that I wanted to do, <laughs> the whole reason why we went there to begin with was so that we could make ourselves the blast furnace, start making steel and start progressing in technology. So the blast furnace requires 27 blast brick. And blast brick is made with brick. So we're gonna need, oh, what is that? I guess nine times four uh, brick and nine times four 
another brick. So 36 of both of those. We do that. Let's go ahead and get that smelting. Yeah, I smelted down that uh, the tin so we could upgrade our armor. And now we don't have armor anymore. Yeah, I didn't realize that the armor had that low durability. And that brute would do so much damage to destroy it. Like, I think that very first hit that we had, like, broke my helmet. That was just ridiculous. Well, anyway, I'm going to go ahead and get the stuff together. We have to let this melt down. Then we have to make sure we have enough clay collected, which I don't think we have any. Yeah, so let me go ahead and do that real quick, and then we will continue on, guys. All right, guys, so our plants did spread once again, but the seed was garbage, so I didn't really care to show it. Uh, but what I'd like to do is something that I should have done to start with, and that is to make ourselves a clipper. Yeah, with the clipper, you can take clippings from a plant and then make multiple of that plant. And if you put four parents around, it should spread and make a child seed faster, and it should pass on more stats. So we should be able to see better stats than just like one at a time and sometimes not transferring another stat over and this and that. Yeah, so that's what we want to do. So let's make some shears. Grab some of our iron here. So we'll do shears. And then we need one more iron and then two sticks. So I should have everything on me to make this. Okay, so we have ourselves a clipper. So which one is better? So this is a one, one, two, and this is a two, two, one. So this one's better. So what we can do is right click on here and take some of these clippings, right? Each one of these has the same stats as this parent. So if we get rid of this, and then we plant down crop sticks, we should be able to replant that. And then this one is a two, two, one. Mm -hmm. So this is what we should have done to begin with. And because the strength is a one out of 10, I think it's a 10% chance that you can actually plant that. So we'll prob we got really lucky with that one. <laughs> yeah, so we're gonna need some bone meal in order to grow these things so we can use the, oop, that's not it. Uh, so we can use the clipper and get some more clippings. So that is mature. I'm gonna take that all the way back down and bring that all the way back up again. And I'll grow this one while I am at it for bone mealing. Okay, so let's see if we can get this one to take there we go. And then we will do the crop sticks right. Oop. Need to do that. This. And then there we go. Okay. So we have uh, three additional ones, which is fine. Now we will make sure all of these plants are fully grown. Like so. So now when the child seed does grow, we should get ourselves a much better chance of getting a whole lot more stats. And all of the stats should carry over since both the parents are the same, or I guess all four of the parents are the same. Anyway, uh, we really should set up sprinklers to expedite this process, but since we're not trying to like rush this, there's no reason to like we need this right now. Uh, we're just gonna do it like this and just let it happen when it happens. It's not like we're not in a race here or anything. So yeah, we don't need that seed. That one doesn't matter. Those don't matter. Okay, we can put our iron away, and then that pebble we can throw away as well. We don't need that or this. And then the crop sticks we'll put away also. So I did put down a few more chests over here. I did have to sift a whole bunch more resources. We needed some more blaze powder. So we had something like 50-something uh, compressed sand. So I hammered those all down into the dust, and I sifted all of those. So we ended up with a bunch of bone meal and all this other stuff here. Uh, and we're just running out of room. Yeah, I tried smelting down some more iron, so we're up to 37 blocks of this stuff. And then I was just like, you know what? We just need to move stuff to another chest. So all of the partial uh, ore chunks, the pieces or whatever, are over here. And then other things which we're not really using that often are over in this chest as well. Nothing in the bottom one. Okay, well, anyway, now that we have the clipper, that's going to make our life that much easier. So now we can continue on making ourselves our blast brick. So let's do that. So that should be all we need. There's 27, and I think that completes the quest. Let's go ahead and undo this stuff here, and I will grab our engineer's hammer. Hey, look at that, we got a bunch of chickens spawned. And they are dropping eggs, look at that. Yeah, I went ahead and I just 
destroyed all of the animals that were around or uh, move fluid cows and things like that we will eventually when we need them be able to spawn a whole bunch of them in so there's not a lot of reason to keep them around and i guess at this point there's not a lot of reason to keep any of this grass around hey just collected all that stuff give it back yeah we could probably get rid of the grassy area at this point the only animal that we don't really have here is just pigs and that doesn't really matter as far as i can tell i mean we had some spawn in and i removed them from the world but anyway, let's go ahead and we will place down our blast furnace. So, I like doing three blocks away from other things, and we will place it right there. Yeah, that should be in line with the smeltery just fine. And like the coke oven, it's just a three by three structure. Whoops. Three by three, and then you got to boop it on the snoot with an engineer's hammer. Boop. There we go. So, I reached the goal really hot topic awesome so now with this we should be able to take some of the coal coke that we have generated over here which we should move this thing uh take the coal coke put that into this guy and then we can put iron in there and i think for every coal coke and every iron you get one steel uh there are much better ways to make steel eventually using mechanism i believe or uh, and eventually beyond that project e will just emc it but for right now i think this is probably the best and only way for us to make steel so we will do this process and this takes it doesn't show on the tooltip here it does take a little bit of time to process now there is an upgraded blast furnace but in order for us to really get any benefit out of that we need steel to craft it for one and we need rf to power the i think they're called blowers anyway We'll look at that when we get there. We're not quite there yet. So let's claim our reward. So now that we have that, our next task is to get one steel ingot, which we have cooking, and the improved blast furnace. Ah, they're blast furnace preheater, not blower. So we need to make two of those, and we need nine reinforced blast brick, which means we need nine steel plates. So it's going to be a little bit of time before we can get to that point, but we should be able to do it without too much trouble at this point uh another thing that we can look at the treated water wheel we need three of these and in order to make three of those we need four of these segments no i guess uh we're gonna need 12 of those i think this is what i was talking about the other episode where i said we need 48 i think that's you know i'm still not counting those i probably should count them but uh i think that's where that number came from is to make a triple water wheel so we have 44 and let's go back to this thing. So each one of these water wheel segments requires five, right? So it is two to make the sticks and then three. So that would be five, right? I think so. Okay, so let's do this. So that will make us two more of those and then we can do three, three, three. And like that. Oh, that's not enough, is it? That's only three. We needed four. Yep, I uh, definitely didn't do that one right. So we do <laughs> that again, and there's that. So that's enough to make one water wheel, but we need three of them, right? That's what the quest wants us. So yeah, we have to do that three more times. Now, I don't think we had enough treated wood to do this, so I'll just go ahead and grab some more of our buckets and grab some more of our creosote that we have over here. Eventually, we will be able to like start storing this stuff into you know, bigger drums or whatever. And we won't have to worry about the Coke oven not running because we've ran out of liquid space. But yeah, we're not quite there yet, but we will be there eventually. Uh, I'll just continue to use some of this wood that we have in this chest here. Okay, and then we've seen this before. That, whoop, this guy. One of those, one of these, etc., etc. yada, yada. And there we go. So now we should have enough treated wood to do what we want to do. So we wanted one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I think that should be enough. And then we want this split into threes like this, like that. There we go. There's 12 of our water wheel segments. And then if we get some steel ingots, we need three of those. We can turn those into water wheels. I'm not sure if we have three steel by now and it might be worth just waiting. No, we do. Well, I'm not going to wait. I could just AFK the rest of that. <laughs> okay, so we got the quest complete for that. So we can come over here and do this. And there is three water wheels. And that might be our first step into getting power. 
I mean, we do have to make a dynamo, I believe, in order to hook that up to, but we are definitely making progress to our very first little bits of RF. Uh, so voltage. Okay, so that's moving the power around. So I don't see one here that's telling us to make the dynamo. Which is kind of interesting. You'd think there'd be one here. you think it'd be part of this quest, actually. All right, so... Immersive dynamo, this guy. So in order to make one of these kinetic dynamos, we do need iron grate machine blocks, three of them. So that's steel or chiseled stone, some kind of stone and iron bars gives you four. So that's rather inexpensive. Red alloy, so that is 16 uh, redstone, two iron. And then we need the copper coil block, which is gonna be these LV wires and iron ingots, LV wires are the copper wires. So now we have to use shears or engineers cutters and some other things. So yeah, this is getting just a little bit more complicated. So tell you guys what, I am going to take a quick moment here, sort of my inventory, get the rest of that creosote, make some more uh, treated wood and we'll be right back. Well, all right guys, I did take out a lot of the creosote and we got some more coal coke. I'm just kind of like coming back and forth and adding more into here and making steel and etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. Uh, I didn't realize how long we were into the video at this point, but I think we can do one more quest before we wrap it up. So now that we got a bunch of treated wood here, we can come over and look at making ourselves uh treated wood fences. Okay, I don't know what the recipe is for that. Engineers or uh immersive engineers workbench is what we're looking for. So that requires treated wood fence. Okay, so that is treated sticks plus some planks. Aha. Uh -huh. Okay, so sticks plus the planks, so we can do that. Cool. Uh, I need to give myself another, uh, I guess, four of those. All right, so we got that. We can make ourselves another crafting table. And there we go. There's an engineer's workbench. So that should be, yeah, that's another quest complete, which is awesome. I did collect all the grass blocks that we had over there. There's no real reason, like I said, for us to spawn in any more animals here. And they're just gonna be annoying roaming around, making sound and so on and so forth. Uh, but yeah, the engineer's workbench is what we need in order to make some of the parts going forward in immersive engineering. But like I said, I didn't realize how long into the video we are right now. So we will have to look at doing that next time. Anyway, guys, that's gonna do it for this episode of Project Dozone 3. Hope you guys liked it. But yep, yeah, that's it for today. Thank you guys for watching. Remember to leave a like on this episode if you liked it. And we'll see you next time. Thanks for watching, guys. Bye-bye.